do, let's go to some questions. The first question was sent by Vishal Jaiswal. What's up, Vishal, my brother? How you doing, boy? Woo, 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 woo. Let's go! <laughs> oh, God, this is so weird, man. But hey, I will do my best to try to keep the same energy that I got in my writing here, here. It's my energy, after all. It's the voice that I hear in my, in my head when I'm typing. So I'm going to do my best to keep the energy the same as the, the articles when I'm answering stuff here. So let's take a look at Vishal's question. Can both the myofibrillar hypertrophy and sarcoplasmic hypertrophy happen at the same time? All right, that's an excellent question. But first, let's take a few steps back. Let's start by defining what is hypertrophy. Hypertrophy is a muscle quality. It's when your muscle gains size. Muscle qualities are things that when provided the right stimulus, your muscle adapts to emphasize that muscle quality. For instance, when you pick up heavy stuff, your body adapts by developing your strength. There are several other muscle qualities like speed, power, flexibility, coordination, anaerobic endurance, work capacity, and VO2 max. Size is one of the muscle qualities that you can develop in your muscles. There's sarcoplasmic hypertrophy that is stimulated by metabolic stress, and there is myofibular hypertrophy that is stimulated by mechanical resistance. But there is also a third mechanism for hypertrophy, stretch-mediated hypertrophy, which is stimulated when you overload the muscle through a stretch position. Myofibrillar hypertrophy usually happens when you're working from 4 to 10 reps. It, you need mechanical resistance. You need force going through the muscle fibers. So your brain can identify that there's a need for more muscle. There's a need to build more muscle fiber, to build more contractile protein structures. If there isn't a need, if the weights are not heavy enough to create a necessity for more muscle to be built, myofibrillar hypertrophy will not be stimulated. So always keep that in mind. In your training, especially in the big compound moves, you need to be moving heavy weights, the heaviest weights that you can move in a bodybuilding rep range of 4 to 12 reps. When you go beyond 12 reps, usually that's not heavy enough to stimulate myofibrillar hypertrophy because it's, it's simply not enough mechanical resistance. It's simply not enough tension, not enough weight. When you go beyond 12 reps, you are working with less than 70% of your one rep max, shifting the stimulus that you are introducing to emphasize, emphasize another type of hypertrophy, sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. Because you are doing so many reps, you're doing more than 12 reps, doing 20 reps, 25 reps, each rep is consuming fuel, the fuel for the contraction, the creatine, the glycogen, they are being burned, they are being fermented within the sarcoplasm of the cell. And this process generates acidity. It uh, changes the pH of the cell environment. And because of it, the cell is damaged by this acidity, leading people to believe that damage to the muscle cell is a stimulus to hypertrophy. But it's simply wrong because the damage doesn't cause hypertrophy. Preventing the damage causes hypertrophy. Because if the cell environment remains acid, it's going to be to completely consume the, the muscle cell. It's going to completely destroy the acid. Don't stop destroying things out of the sudden. So the body has to send metabolites to restore, reestablish the levels, uh, stable levels of acidity within the cell environment. And by doing so, these metabolites occupy space within the muscle sarcoplasm, promoting sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. The, cell, the cells get stretched, it get filled with metabolites. But don't hear what I'm not saying. If you feel a burn in the muscle, it's that acidity doing its thing. If you feel the pump on your muscle, it's the metabolites accumulating inside the muscle cell. So these two indicators are great indicators to, for you to know that you are introducing sarcoplasmic hypertrophy to your muscles. So to your question, can sarcoplasmic hypertrophy and myofibrillar hypertrophy happen at the same time? Yes, they always happen at the same time. Biology is very, very, very complicated and everything happens all at once. What you are going to do by shifting the way that you train is emphasize one or another. But since there are different mechanisms, it's intelligent for you to have both mechanisms addressed within your training. So let's say you're training your chest, 
you have you, you will use a heavy bench press to emphasize myofibrillar hypertrophy and then you can do push-ups for high reps like 20 reps 40 reps to generate that metabolic stress that will emphasize psychoplasmic hypertrophy Whew. that was hard man that was really very 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 hard i think i'm going to ask to answer one more question or two tops before i need to stop recording and finish this video but i I was planning on answering 15 questions, but it's so fucking hard to express myself in other in, in, in English that I'm I'm not. Especially these 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 scientific topics, it's very 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 way harder than I expected. But I'm going to progressive overload my 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 recording skills and my talking skills, and I'm I'm sure that in the in the in the next videos I'm going to be way more efficient in communicating these things so Vishal my brother I hope I was able to shed some light upon this darkness my friend you know what I'm saying so bang that iron and stay on the iron path bro big kiss let's go to the next question which was sent by Almighty E